Hey everybody, Jim here, and today have I got a treat for you. We're going to be installing and reviewing this Aetherial Echo Victor Tango 9 Kilo tankless water heater. It looks like there's some documentation there at the bottom of the box. Got a nice instruction manual in English. Very nice. Always a bonus. I speak too many languages already. I don't want to learn another one just to install tankless water heaters. Apparently it comes with a one year warranty. Main unit, three years from the major parts have a warranty of three years from the date of purchase. I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to void the warranty during this demonstration. Maybe a typical mounting hardware. Oh, nice, I got a couple of rubber washers. Three, T looks like two of them have screens. And your typical little hook mounting hardware. Easy peasy stuff. Boy, is this thing pretty. That is just a lovely device. I'm, I'm very impressed. It's got a lot of warnings on the side, and I am going to summarily ignore the ones that are in French. And uh, here on the back, let me see if I can get you a macro shot of this sticker. There, it talks about how it runs at 240 volts, 60 hertz, 9 kilowatts at 27.5 amps. Is that right? No, sorry, my vision's not that good. 37.5 amps. It's a very, very fine print, and I'm a little older. 40 amp double pole breaker. 8 gauge wire, we're all good there. If you watched the last video where I installed and reviewed the Canuos tankless water heater, then you, you could watch me install the 8 gauge wire and the 40 amp double pole breaker and the quick disconnect. I'm not going to do that again because it's already in place. Boy, this thing is heavy. I'm, I want to find out just how heavy this thing is. Alright, I've got the scale. So here's the canoeus from last week. Sweet device. I, I very much like it, albeit uh, despite the fact that it's got relays in there instead of MOSFETs controlling the bits inside. Let's zero this out. It says that this thing is 4.8 pounds. The air ethereal. saying error. Sorry guys, let's just... Alright, it's zeroed out with the pigtail. This thing weighs 8.8 .8 pounds, nearly 9 pounds. Uh, it seems like nearly double so much as the last tankless water heater, and it, it's, it's huge. Compare that to the Canuos. Which is about half its size. Still pretty impressive. Let's have a look inside. Notice that the wires, they're not like the canoeus where they are. Oh, 
I mean, they're, they're like a low gauge, but these, these are some beefy wires. As your typical European standard, you have yellow green as the ground, not neutral, ground. And then you have red and black or red and blue as the two hots. Let me show you this fun sticker. It says here, risk of electrical shock, do not disassemble. Come on, get off of there. Sorry, my hands come moving in a second. There we go. Do not disassemble, no user serviceable parts inside. If the product has been disassembled, it will no longer be covered by warranty. Well, I'm, I'm going to tease this apart so you don't have to. I suspect that there's a screw right under here. Let me get a look at this again before I open it up. It's really pretty. So these guys, they've really put a lot of effort into making this aesthetically pleasing. It's such a pretty device. It's got this fun charcoal plastic uh, high gloss finish on the front. It's almost like, a, almost like a mirror. And then on the back, they've hidden the injection molding scar with this fun sticker. It has your typical little latches that hook onto the typical hooks that come along with these. But I want to see the inside. Let's have a look. Wow. Doesn't seem like there's a lot in there but I'm pretty sure there is. Let's get in close. So inside, we've got this new kind of rectangular kettle that has two very, very long stems on it one for the cold side that comes in and hits some sort of sensor. I don't know what that is, but I'm, I'm guessing it's a temperature, or this is a temperature sensor. This is probably some sort of flow meter that uh, is on, the, on the, the cold supply line. And what I'm really hoping is that this is the MOSFET that controls the coils that go inside the kettle in order to keep it nice and toasty. It says here 220 volts AC, 9,000 watts. Oh, I'm guessing this 2022.10 is the date of October of 2022. And then here you have what are most likely, and I'm, again, there's no guarantee, but it's, it's, this is a very good guess. The dielectric coils or the, the the, the heating coils that go inside of it along with some high temperature silicon along the edges here and it feels very rubbery but it's not rubber and it's not hot glue it's it's high temperature silicon and it goes off to a handful of different items on this board up here we have this uh, typical coil that is used most likely for measuring the number of amps that are being passed into the thing and uh, controlling the amperage that way. Here is almost certainly a quick disconnect for over temperature. I'll, I'll look at the serial numbers and get that for you in a second. And then down here, boy, that sure looks like a relay. I'll peel that sticker off and look underneath to see what it is. Everything else looks pretty good. You have a transformer that's stepping it down from 220 to whatever voltage is being used in this PCB. Handful of wires going off to more simple, uh, temp, uh, 
sensors. Like here's the outbound temperature sensor. Uh, another wire, letting it know that electricity is going into these coils. And something over here, oh, that's the ground wire. So the ground wire, your green and yellow wire, is connected directly to the kettle. So that's absolutely for ground and not for neutral. You have your two hots, and the coil goes around both, so I'm guessing it's just measuring the volt, the amps on both. All told, it looks very straightforward, like a bunch of the others. Let me look at these part numbers, and then I'll come right back. Well, I've got it figured out. This is, in fact, a 95 degrees Celsius thermostat auto kill switch that completely disconnects the power at 95 degrees Celsius. It's a, it's a fun safety feature. I appreciate that. This device is something called a TRIAC. I thought it was a MOSFET, but like everyone else, I'm learning something new every day. And this TRIAC is, in fact, an AC power switch, much like this, this relay. So this relay is connected to... Ooh, let's see, it looks like it's connected to just one of, one of the three coils inside, and the TRIAC is connected to two of them here. Let me get you a close-up of that. So this is the one connected to the relay, and this is the one connected to the triac. And I keep doing these run-on sentences. I'm sorry. I'm working on that. This triac is connected to a, a fun spot here on this pipe, on the cold supply line, presumably to keep it cool, but also to put any heat that's generated by it into the cold water coming into the tankless water here, making it more efficient. All that waste heat from this triac just goes into the water before it reaches the kettle, where it is heated by these three coils. So you have one hot supply line coming from the quick disconnect at 95 Celsius. Anything under 95 Celsius, it's, it just keeps uh, supplying the electricity. And then the other, uh, the, the other half is controlled by the triac and the relay. So yeah, it's, this is just your regular old cheap relay. I'm hoping that it's going to be fine. It's rated for 30 amps. And if it's only running one of these coils, it should be just fine. Everything else looks just fine. I don't know what this corrosion at the hot outlet is for. Uh, may maybe that was from the factory. I'm not sure. But the brass connector at this end is just fine. And boy, I, I really don't know what that is. Uh, let me see if I can scratch this to see what's underneath this, this pretty paint. Yeah, it sure looks like aluminum. Sorry about that. It looks like the, the kettle is aluminum, and then it just keeps going on as aluminum with this pretty paint, this gold paint on it, until it gets to about here where it may or may not be brass. It looks like there's a sleeve inside of it at this end, but no sleeve here on the hot outlet. Oh, this is probably where the screw... Oh, you know what? Let me get you a macro shot inside that tube. inside the tube is a fun little screen. Well, I didn't notice that before. So in addition to that screen, I'm going to put the, the rubber screen that came with it in line with this pipe when I install it, which I'm going to do now.
All right. Looks like we're set. We have a leak. I'm hoping that this just wasn't tight enough. Let's try again. my fault. All right. All right it's still pretty dry. Great. Okay, that was in fact my fault. Now that we've evacuated the air... Let's hop this sweet thing up and see what happens. So it's got a fun little message there that says standby. I don't know if you can read that. It's just a little hill-shaped circle with the word standby in the middle. Let me turn this on and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It defaults to Fahrenheit. That's pretty nice. Uh, 80 is not going to cut it. I want to go to at least 113. All right, so it peaks at 131 or 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's try one, 113. So right now it's at 76. I'm going to turn it on and see what happens. Boy, it jumped up to 113 degrees quick. Let me measure the temperature of the water coming out of the ground here in Pensacola, Florida, before we get started. All right, we're going to go with 72.5. Let's see how quickly. First, I'll, I kind of want to see how hot it can get the water. All right, so I've set it to 131 degrees. I want to see just how much energy it can put into this water. All right, it's ramping up. And I'm hoping that this thermostat built in is pretty accurate. I'm feeling it with my hands, and boy, it, ouch, ow. Yeah, it's, it's really hot. Let's see just how hot this water is.
almost 134. Now for it to boost, 74 degree water up to 131, it's drawing about 33 amps. Got my loop meter on there. Looks like it's drawing 32, 33. All told, I'm pretty excited. I don't want to run this at 131 because it'll burn my children. If you're at home, try to go for 45 or Celsius or 113 Fahrenheit. That is a good safe temperature to run your showers and your sinks because you're not going to burn your children with 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I couldn't give it a proper test because the differential in temperature coming out of the ground here in Pensacola in mid-March isn't low enough to the temperature I want, the max temperature at 55 Celsius or 131 degrees Fahrenheit, in order to coax this thing into operating at its advertised 37 and a half amps, but I'm, I, I bet you it does. I think I'm ready to rate this thing. Sorry about all the junk in the background there, I just stuff. <laughs> you know how sheds get. Things really pretty. I really like that. My head's very shiny. The uh, I like that it's got this little standby light to let you know that it's plugged in. And the interface is very simple. It just shows you the temperature in Fahrenheit. I don't know if there's a way to change that to Celsius. Nope. I'm holding the button. I suppose I should RTFM. Hold on a moment while I do that. So I looked into the instructions and sure enough, there's nothing in there that tells you how to switch it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So um, what I'm guessing is that this device is a American version that's going to show you Fahrenheit. I can live with that. Besides being really pretty, it comes with this keen pigtail that is very beefy wire. That is for sure eight gauge wire coming from the device and going from the appliance and going into this breaker box, the ground wire is probably not ga eight gauge. It's probably 10 gauge because it is a bit thinner than the other two. Not a problem there. You're just grounding the kettle. The connectors at the bottom, they're just regular old half inch NPT. I guess if I had any complaints about it, it's that it's just too darn tall. Like I'm have to back way up to get the whole thing into the camera's image sensor. I think that they could have turned the circuit board, the PCB, 90 degrees, and shaved off about six inches from this device and, and still had it operate just fine. I don't know, but they made it very tall. So it's not going to fit in the particular place that I like to put these, which is right under the kitchen sink. Here you can see I've got this brass fitting that's that splitter that goes from your 3H uh, supply line and splits it into two 3H supply lines, one for the tankless water heater and then one for your your faucet. Now this could be a bathroom faucet or a kitchen faucet, but if you put another three quarter inch splitter, I'm sorry, three eighths inch splitter on this side, on the hot side, or sorry, on the cold supply side, you can actually put this in line between the hot and cold rails in your home underneath the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink and get, do a complete conversion from tank to tankless because every device that uses hot water is on the hot rail in your house. So just putting these splitters under the kitchen sink and then connecting this with a 40 amp supply line, getting an electrician to come into your house and get permits and to do all this work will get you into the tankless world. These things tend to run about 99.5 plus percent efficient. Even the waste heat from the electric switch 
component, that solid state component, goes into the cold supply line before it hits the kettle. So that's not wasted. It's actually used by the, the tank. Very, very clever stuff. All told, I think the thing is really neat. If you have dedicated space where your tank water heater used to be, or if you are building new construction and have a spot where this giant device can go, you know what, let me grab my tape roll and I'll, I'll tell you just how big this silly thing is. So it looks like this device is right at 16, inch, 16 inches tall by nine and three quarter inches wide. Sorry, it's, it's not in focus, but you get the idea. And offset from the back, it is right at three inches deep. So yeah, if I had any complaints at all, it would be that the device is just, this appliance, it's just too big. It could be six inches shorter and about two inches narrower. The depth, uh, maybe a half inch, uh, it could be shaved off. But I think so much of why they did that is to give this thing the aesthetic that is uh, very common right now. Let me, let, me, let me record this in focus. Yeah, that's pretty close to focus. So whoever designed this maybe thought you were going to put it where guests can see it or where prospective home buyers might walk by and see the thing and go, oh, look at that. It's, very, it's so pretty. But for guys like me that just need hot water at a low price, then it doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to be hidden, really. With that said, let's talk about the price. These things currently sell for under $180. It's a little more than I'm used to spending on a tankless water heater, especially one that runs under 40 amps. But if it's really going to pull 37 and a half amps on your eight gauge wire, 40 amp circuit, and provide you with that hot, hot water in the wintertime, then in fact, this will work out just fine if you are south of I-10 here in the US, and that is uh, under the 30th parallel in the rest of the world. If you're below I-20, there's a good chance that this will work 10 months out of the year very successfully. And the other two months during the winter, you can restrict the flow and get that heat up, but take a shower at one and a quarter or maybe one gallon per minute instead of one and a half gallons per minute. Still a great device, 180 bucks, pretty as can be, and it seems to be well made. I, I don't know that I like that relay inside instead of another, um, gosh, it's not a MOSFET, it's something else. Uh, the relay, I kind of wish they had used two triacs. But all told, I think that for the money, it's a pretty good deal. There are devices out there that will do a, just about the same job for a lot less. And yeah, I don't, I don't really have any real complaints except for the gigantic size of the thing. Well, hey, I sure learned a lot making this video, and I hope you did too. Thanks so much for watching.